أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن من حولكم من الأعراب منافقون ومن أهل المدينة مرضوا على النفاق لا تعلمهم نحن نعلمهم سنعذبهم مرتين ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم After describing the two highest cardinals السابقون الأولون then المتبعون بإحسان those who follow but in with the best of intentions, in the best of the manners. But now the other extreme, from the lowest, and they are the monafiqun, hypocrites, legally Muslims, actually, really, unbelievers, kuffar. وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ And among them who are around you from the from among the desert Arabs, there are munafiqun, there are hypocrites. And also, Wamin Ahri Madina, they are there in Madina also, in the city of the Prophet also. Maradu ala nifaq, they have persisted in nifaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them many a times and, you know, asked them to repent, to make, to mend their ways, but, you know, they persisted. مرضوا على النفاق لا تعلمهم نحن نعلمهم You don't know all of them We know all of them سنعذبهم مرتين We shall chastise them punish them twice ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم And then they will be returned to the great torment Now what is this مرتين Number one, خِزْيُنْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The humiliation that they had now, when they were exposed. You know, Allah Deen, now Supreme. They were hoping for some turn of events, which might be favorable for them. But now, the عَلَيْهِمْ دَعَرَةُ السَّوْءَ All the bad aspects fell on them. And Muslim, you know, they were successful. Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم now the uncrowned king of Arabian Peninsula. He is the authority of the whole of Arabian Peninsula. So this is the humiliation that they brought. And they were exposed in the eyes of the Mormons. And number two, I, as far as I think, there are more than one place in the Quran where, you know, a reference is there to the torment of the grave. In the grave also, there is going to be a torment. Azab al-Qabr. So actually, as we find in Surah Al-Furqan, يضعف لهم العذاب يوم القيامة. On the day of judgment, their chastisement and torment will be doubled. So it means that before that also, they were having some sort of, because you know people who don't believe in Hadith, they say, no, there's no mention of this thing in Quran. But I think there are references, you know. Although not in so clear words, but here also, سَنُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّةً In this world, and then in the grave, ثُمَّ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ عَظِيمٍ And the real punishment and the great torment is that of the hell. Now, two levels in between. One is closer to the munafiqeen, people who are permanently weak in faith, but they are not munafiqs. But their faith, their belief is permanently weak. And then a higher level, people having strong faith. But sometimes, even you know, a very brave person and a very tough person can also sleep. There can be slips. So those are 
these are they are close to the to those people but tabi'una bi ihsan but they commit some blunder they are they get slipped somewhere so these are i call them the upper middle and the lower middle the lowest are the munafiqun then the lower middle the upper middle and then the two super super classes you know one topmost was sabiqun alawwalun and number two the muttabi'un bi ihsan now who are that lower middle wa akharun ahtarafu bi zunubihim khalatu amalan salihan wa akhara sayya and there are others who confess their sins this is the line between munafiq and a weak muslim muslim of a weak faith when the faith intensity of iman is not sufficient he will be sleeping he will be doing mistakes and committing errors but he will confess he will not tell a lie he will not swear by allah wrongly sayaqifuna billah no he will confess his weakness etraf is the dividing line so long as a muslim is confessing his weaknesses and he comes to the prophet also ya rasulullah istaghfirli if they also are forgiving they are asking the forgiveness of allah and they ask the prophet also to ask the forgiveness of allah they actually i i was i committed a blunder i confess my weakness so this person although apparently he will resemble the munafiq he also held back he also didn't go but he is confessing so actually they resemble with the munafiq but because they are confessing they admit their faults so they are not munafiqs wa akharuna tarafu bi zunubihim this is the key word i'tiraf to confess admit khalatu amalan salihan wa akhara sayya they are mixed good deeds also bad deeds also doing something good doing something bad good doing something good something virtuous something evil asallahu wa yatubu alayhim it can be hoped that allah subhanahu wa taala will have mercy on them will turn towards them with mercy and compassion inna allah ghafurur rahim allah is surely ghafur and rahim and he is forgiving and merciful but in addition to this hope now a prescription is also being given you are a sick person your iman is not strong enough and when the iman is not strong enough you are liable to catch the infection of nifaq at any moment when you know the resistance is low you can catch infection at any moment so you have to strengthen your iman purify yourself and what is the way what is the method khuz min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim biha accept o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from their belongings and property sadaqa this sadaqa will purify the impurities in their minds or in their hearts you know this is the cause of the weakness of their faith there are some impurities so actually this you know pollution now this word is very important to the pollution pollution so there is some pollution within them and that is the source of this weakness of their faith khud min amwalihim sadaqatan except from their amal and we have read last night the ayah now about the munafiqin the the the, uh, the messenger was commanded not to accept anything from them but from these people the lower middle because they are not munafiqin khud min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim biha you will cleanse them and you will purify their souls through this this sadaqa is actually that is why you know this sadaqa is called zaka what is zaka purification what is tazkiya tazkiya purifying the souls the most effective in the purification of the souls is sadaqa because the biggest cause of nifaq is the love of this worldly life and the love for mal for for money and for you know worldly belongings that is the biggest symbol of the world of the of the love for this life so you you have to now reduce it this love you have to purify your souls of the love of of money and belongings the riches and the ways you spend in the way of allah
خذ من اموالهم صدقه تطهر هم وتذكيهم بها وصل عليهم and you also pray for them ان صلاتك سكن لهم verily oh messenger of allah your prayers for them are a source of solace for them if you pray for them you know it it becomes a solace for them والله سميع عليم الله is all hearing all knowing alam ya'lamu anna allah huwa yaqbalu at-tawbah 'ala ibadi don't they know what does it mean they should know they should rest assured that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah from his bondsmen his servants if you have committed a blunder you admit it make tawbah at-tayyib min al-dhanb kam allah dhanba lahu someone who actually makes toba to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from whichever zamb it may be which whatever ever sin it can be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just wash it out cleans cleans away from your record you know it will be washed off so actually alam ya'lamu anna allah huwa yaqbalu toba ta'ala ibadihi wa ya'khudhu as-sadaqat and look although he is ghani ghani yun lil alamin but he accepts sadaqat It's very important point. He's ghani. He doesn't need any sadaqa. For your sake, he is accepting your sadaqa to purify you. He doesn't need it. Actually, he is accepting the sadaqa only for your good, so that you are purified from within. One Allah wa Taala Rahim, and they should know and they should rest assured that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. is tawab he very much accepts the toba and returns to his bonds man with all his mercy and compassion and he is merciful wa qul a'malu fa sayara allah amalakum and tell them try go on trying your heart to get rid of these things impurities and to have more and more of faith more of more iman and to earn more and more of good deeds qul a'malu you must also try yourself don't depend solely that the prophet has asked the forgiveness for me so it's all it's sufficient no no don't be confident about that you have also to go on trying your best amal you know it is something which we call labor continue your labor your struggle qul amalu fa sayara allah amalakum wa rasuluhu so allah and his messenger will see to your attitude whether you are improving whether you know you are being cured of the disease wal mu'minun and the mu'mins they are all all of these believers they will also see that such a person to such person was somewhat sub weak you know in his iman in his faith in his deeds in his sacrifices now he is improving he is coming to the level was saturduna ila alim al ghaib wa al shahada and very soon you will be returned to him who is the knower of all the seen and the unseen fa yunabbihukum bima kuntum ta'lamun and he will then inform you of what you had been doing now the upper middle class wa akharuna murjauna li amrillah there are still others whose case has been held in suspense for allah's decree or allah's command اما يعذبهم واما يتوب عليهم كسب الله it's possible that he gives them the punishment and it is also possible that he accepts the tawbah from them والله عليم الحكيم and allah is all knowing all wise now this was the case of three very sincere companions of the prophet and the longest hadith as far as i think in in the sahih bukhari pertains to this incident hazrat qab ibn malik radhiyallahu ta'ala an and murara ibn rabi and hilal ibn umayya radhiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in these three were most sincere people and they had never faltered faltered or faulted at any other occasion but at this time something happened and they didn't go and hazrat qab ibn malik has given for in full detail that my nafs you know kept deceiving me okay you are healthy your you know camel is very sturdy you can move fast let the this this you know formation of 30000 it can move slowly let them start 
They are going, they are leaving today. I can leave tomorrow, day after. And be a single journeying person, I can go fast. And I am a very sturdy camel. So, I can enjoy a few days more here with the family, living at home. So, in that way, my nafs, you know, kept me deceiving and deceiving. Till such time that it dawned on me that now, howsoever fast I go, I can't catch with the Prophet's knowledge. So he came to the Prophet, accepted. He said, I have also this tongue. I can also tell a lie. When he was brought to the book, as pleasure was called. But you know, I know it, that I can deceive you but not Allah. So I accept. I was never healthier, more healthier than I was at that time. I was never wealthier, more wealthy than I was at that time when you were leaving. I had everything. I have no excuse to present. I confess. I accept my guilt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet kept the cases of these three persons. The same was the case of other two also. Murara ibn Rabi, Hilal ibn Umayyah. But the story has been told in full detail by Hazrat Kaab ibn Malik and it is included in the Sahih of Imam um, Bukhari Rahimahullah. It's very important because you know people who are engaged in some struggle. For them these things are very important to understand, to have an insight. What happens to people at times? You know, even the most sincere people, they can slip. Something can happen. And this Saturn can deceive them. So that, that understanding and insight we must have. Because we have also to deal with people, human beings. If this could happen to the companions of the Prophet there's more likelihood that this will happen with us and with our companions and with our, you know, whosoever are joined together with us in some struggle and in some, you know, movement. In my their case will be discussed again, inshallah, when the that the acceptance of their Tawbah was you know, announced. But this is the upper middle class. They were close, most sincere Sahaba. But they also slipped. Now this is another, a big conspiracy of the hypocrites of Medina. They wanted some center. So that they can gather over there. They can have consultations among them. And where, you know, if somebody is coming from outside Medina also, he can also stay. So they built a mosque. They called it a mosque. In the vicinity of Masjid al Quba, the Masjid al Quba, you know, which was the first mosque built at the place where Prophet ﷺ, after reaching Medina, when he made Hijrah, he stayed there for a few days. So that was the place, Masjid al Quba. But very near, there was no need of another mosque. The mosque was very quiet at hand. When the Masjid al Quba was there, there was no need of another mosque to be built. But they built. And they said, Oh, oh Prophet of Allah, some of us are lazy, some of us can't reach Masjid al Quba all the five times. So we have built this Masjid. So please, once, please visit us. So that, you know, if you also visit there, so we shall have barakah and we shall have all the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and blessing. But the Prophet, you know, refused. He said, okay, if I come back from Tabuk, then I'll see to it. I'll, I'll try. So that was the case which he you know, postponed. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidding him. Wow. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا زِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْسَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ As to those who have set up a mosque, but what for? To hurt the cause of Islam, زِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا To promote disbelief, وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And promote dissension, and division among the Muslims. And to make it an outpost for those who are hostile towards Allah and His Messenger. So that away from the main city of Medina, they can gather there, it's an outpost, 
and if somebody is coming from outside also with some message from the, the other you know hostile enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can come and stay over there so that his presence is not known to all the Muslims so all these were the purposes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cleared made them clear وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ذِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِسَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ Who have been hostile to Allah and His Messenger from before. وَلَا يَحْلِفُنَّ إِنْ أَرَضْنَا إِلَّا الْحُسْنَ They will swear, definitely swear. They will state an oath. We didn't intend anything except the best. We had the best of intention, O Prophet of Allah. وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ And Allah testifies that they are liars. They are telling a lie. لَا تَقُمْ فِيهِ أَبَدًا Never stand in that mosque, you, O Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. لَا مَسْجِدٌ أُسَّسَ عَلَى التَّقْوَى مِنَ وَلِي يَوْمْ أَحَقُّ أَنْ تَقُومَ فِيهِ The mosque which was founded from the very first day on taqwa, on piety, on fear of Allah, that, that has both right that you should stand in it. This is Masjid al-Quba. That is the mosque there. You go there, you stand there, you pray there. فِيهِ رِجَالٌ يُحِبُّونَ يُتَطَحَّرُوا In that mosque there are people who wants the purification. They love very much purification. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُطَّحِّرِينَ Allah very much loves the people who, who take to purification of their bodies also and their souls also. أَفَمَنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى تَقْوَى مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِزْوَانٍ خَيْرٌ أَمَّنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى شَفَا جُرُفٍ خَارٍ فَنْهَارَ بِهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ So know which one is better. Better that who has founded his building on taqwa. Min Allah, what is one? Taqwa of Allah and pleasure of Allah. These are the foundations on which somebody has founded his building. Is it better? أَمَّنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى شَفَا جُرُفٍ هَارٍ Or the one who has founded his building on the brink of a crumbling bank. فَنْهَارَ فِي بِهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ So that it crumbles with him into the fire of hell. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَعْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And Allah doesn't make these people transgressors successful. Don't take them to their destination. لَا يَذَانُ بُنْيَا لَا يَذَالُ بُنْيَانُهُمُ الَّذِي بَنَاوْ غِيبَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَّا أَنْ تَقَتَّعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ The building which they have made will never cease to be a cause of doubt within their hearts unless their hearts are cut into pieces. You know, the fact, just like cancer, so long as the cancer is You know, limited to one tissue, one part, you can operate. But if it has, you know, spread to whole of the body, which part of body to be operated? Tan hama daag daag shud, bamba kuja kuja naam. You can't operate now. In the same way, their nifaq has permeated all parts of their heart. Now, if you want to make an operation, you will have to cut the heart into pieces, you know. Tear it away. Then only you will be able to take out the roots of nifaq from their hearts. إِلَّا أَنْ تَقَتَّعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Now, one of the most important ayat of the Qur'an for all times to come. The essence of deen. Essence of deen. Essence of deen. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَمْ وَأَمْوَا لَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Verily Allah has purchased, already purchased from the believers their lives as well as their belongings in exchange of Jannah. This is the essence of Iman. If you are a true believer, you have sold out yourself. Now whatever you have is just a trust with you. You have to give it, present it whenever you are required. But who will require? That is the, that is the decisive question. Here in this ayah you will find the word of Ba'a. Ba'a. And from Ba'a it comes to Ba'a. 
you sold yourself to Allah and you pledge yourself to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Actually, the selling and purchasing is between Allah and Muhammad. Allah has got the price to pay. Jannah is with him. But you know, in between is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He will tell you where to spend. He will tell you where to go and risk your life. But you can't refuse now because you have already sold yourself. In the Allah has tara min al mu'minin al fusam wa amwal aw bi'an alhum al jannah. You can't rule of this Allah. It's on the basis of this sale and purchase agreement that they are the mu'mins. They are fighting in the cause of Allah. For yaktulun aw yuktulun, they are slaying the kuffar and they are being slain also. Their bodies are also not not made of steel that they cannot have any injury. Even if you know the body of Hamza رضي الله تعالى عنه, it could be pierced through a spear. There can be no other exception. Wadan alayhi hakkan, very important. This is a promise binding on him. Allah is saying it is binding on me, and I have ratified it thrice. في التوراة والإن بعد عليه حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن. I have thrice ratified this sale. I have given this in Torah, then again in Injil, and now for the third time in Quran. ما من أوفى بأحده من الله and who can be more true to his promise than Allah سبحانه وتعالى. فَاسْتَبْ شِرُوبِ بَيْعِكُمُ الَّذِي بَعْيَعْتُمْ بِي So now rejoice. This is the best bargain that, that can be made. No better bargain. So rejoice. فَاسْتَبْ شِرُوبِ بَيْعِكُمُ الَّذِي بَعْيَعْتُمْ On the sale purchase that you have done with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now here you find بَعْيَعْ بَعْيَعْ and mubayat baba mufala bayatum bi between two two persons you know bay this is the purchaser this is the seller and this is mubayat between the two so the purchaser is allah seller is mumin and as i told you there is a third person in between at that time he was muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is why we find in the ayah number 10 of surah al fat إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ عَيْدِهِمْ Verily, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are pledging themselves to you, they are pledging to Allah. So it's a tripartite agreement. يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ عَيْدِهِمْ When there was going to be a bayah, two hands. Hand of Muhammad, clear. Hand of the mubayah, who is doing the, who is pledging over him. There is a third hand, invisible. Yadu Allahu Fawqa Adi Him. There is the hand of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala over their hands. So it's a tripartite agreement. Now after him, who? I told you, there's no system of organization, as far as I have understood up till this time, this hour, mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah or the Hadith or the whole history of the Muslim Ummah, except there. Somebody stands up. I want to do this work. You test him. Go see to him whether he really means business, whether he is sincere, whether he knows, or is only an emotional type of person. He knows the things. He is knowledgeable. He knows the part. As if uh, whether he is clear about methodology or not, which way he will take. You satisfy yourself. But then you pledge yourself. The only difference of pledging between the pledge given to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the pledge to be given to any other person after him, the only difference is that was absolute obedience. Whatever you say, we shall obey. Because Muhammad couldn't say anything wrong. After him, even Abu Bakr couldn't demand that type of pledge. What to speak of any other person within the limits of the Sharia? Fil Maaruf. That is why in Tanzim-e Islami we had adopted that very hadith 
بايانا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على السمع والطاعته في العسر واليسر والمنشط والمكره متفق عليه حديث بوت ان صحيح اف بخاري وصحيح ومسلم رحمه الله بٹ وی ار ویری ون ورڈ ان یو بایو کا ان سمع و طاعت فی المعروف ویدن دی لیمٹس اف دی شریعہ ائی پلگ مائی سیلف وٹ ایور کمانڈ یو ول گیو ائی ایل ایکسپٹ ائی ول گیو مائی ایڈوائس ائی ول گیو مائی اوپینین بٹ یو نو دی ڈیسیجن ول ریسٹ وتھ یو دس از دی بیسس اف بیا اینڈ ناؤ یو نو If there is some sale and purchase between Allah and the person, how he will spend it? Where to spend? Either is an individual, or if there is a collective struggle and nothing can be done, you know, without a collective struggle, what should be the basis of that that organization? That is very particular and very pertinent question. So these things are to be pondered upon seriously. ان الله اشترى من المؤمنين انفسهم واموالهم بان لهم الجنه يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون ويقتلون وعدا عليه حقا في التوراه والانجيل والقران ومن اوفى بعهده من الله فاستبشروا ببيعكم الذي بايعتم به وذلك هو الفوز العظيم and this is actually the biggest success rejoice you have made the most profitable bargain Now, what is the qualities of those people who enter into this bargain? Glimpses of their character. Nine words, nine attributes, nine qualities. Attaibun al-abidun al-hamidun al-sayhun al-raqiun al-sadidun al-amirun bil-maruf wal-nahun al-munkar wal-hafizun al-hudud Allah wa bashir al-mu'minin. These two ayat also every Muslim should remember by heart. those who keep on repenting whenever they feel you know we have committed something wrong how so our small it may be repent abidun worshiping allah obeying allah loving allah from the depths of their hearts hamidun praising him all the time with every action there is a dua masnoon dua praising him alhamdulillah allazi ahyani ba'da ma matani when you just rise you open your eyes in the morning Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'da ma tani when you come out from the toilet alhamdulillah alladhi azhab anni al aza wa afani when you have taken food alhamdulillah alladhi at'amani wa saqani so hamd going on going on hamidu asaihun what is saihun siyaha in the olden days was rahbaniya people leaving cities and towns and going to woods and you know wilderness and to deserts and to mountain caves this was sayah but in islam this has been forbidden la sayahat fi al-islam illa as-sawm the, the, the prophet said except sawm here also you are forbidden from some you know some things you are not you know, allowed to eat you know you, you can't have you know, your sexual urge satisfied although you have the the halal means with you everything is there but you know you are forbidden la sihata fil islam illa sawm therefore it is translated everywhere who to keep on fasting but there is no you know literal connection between the two ar raqiun keep on going wa sajidun prostrating before allah subhanahu wa taala al amiruna bil ma'ruf now from the personal qualities to the collective qualities amr bil ma'ruf this is for the society and joining whatever is correct and just and right wal nahuna anil munkar forbidding from whatever is wrong and unjust wal hafizuna li hududillah and ho those who keep allah's bounds who protect allah's bounds and this has two meanings you observe the limits of allah and you stand guard at those limits i won't allow you to transgress so actually they become 10 although they are 10 they are 9 in in words attaibun al abidun al hamidun al sahun al raqiun al sajidun al amirun bil ma'ruf wa nahun anil munkar wa hafizun li hududillah but this hafizun li hududillah is two aspects keep yourself limited don't transgress 
بٹ یو اسٹینڈ گارڈس ٹو دا لمٹس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی فبشر المؤمنین اینڈ او مسنجر اف اللہ گیو دی گلیڈ ٹائڈنگس ٹو سچ مومنٹس مے اللہ انکلوڈ اس مے اللہ گیو اس دی کریج ٹو میک دس بارگین وتھ اللہ سبحان و تعالی کانشسلی ما قال ان النبي والذين امنوا يستغفروا للمشركين اتس نوت بيفيتنج بيكمنگ اف ا پروفٹ نور فار دوز ہو کم ٹو بیلیو ان يستغفروا للمشركين دیٹ دے شوڈ آسک اللہس فرگیونس فار دی مشرکس دوز ہو ایسوسیٹ سم ون ایلس اور سم تھنگ وتھ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ان اینی ریسپیکٹ ولو کانو لی قربا اول دو دے مائٹ بی کلوزلی ریلیٹڈ من بعد ما تبين لهم انهم اصحاب الجحيم after it becomes clear about them that they are the companions of fire they are the people of fire وما كان استغفار ابراهيم لابيه الا الموعده وعدها اياه and the asking of forgiveness of ibrahim alay salatu wassalam for his father was actually due to a promise he had made to him this promise is mentioned in surah maryam and the father other said you know get out from my sight wahjurni maliya then when ibrahim started going out from the home he said salamun alaik sastaghfiru laka rabbi innahu kana bi hafiya i will ask allah's forgiveness for you o oh father he is very kind to me he will listen to me so this was the promise so he kept for asking for forgiveness but it was also till a particular certain time falamma tabayyana lahu annahu aduwwun lillah when it became absolutely clear to him that he is enemy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was hoping maybe that he is guided to the right path he comes to iman tabarra minhu he disowned him in ibrahim ala allah ur halim very really, ibrahim was a very tender hearted person and a very forbearing person ma kana allah li yudilla qawman ba'da is hadahum hatta yubayyana lahum ma yattaqun and it is not for allah that he should declare somebody some people as gone astray after he has given them the guidance hatta yubayyana lahum ma yattaqun until he makes it clear to him what they should avoid because this was not made clear up till now that momin cannot ask the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa taala for mushrikeen whether they were parents if someone of you have been asking allah subhanahu wa taala will condone but now it has been made clear inna allah bi kulli shay'in alim verily allah knows everything ان الله له ملك السماوات والارض يحيي ويميت verily to allah belong the sovereignty of all the heavens and the earth he gives life and he puts to death وما لكم من دون الله من ولي ولا نصير for you there is no protector no helper besides allah or against allah doom can be translated in many ways لقد تاب الله على النبي والمهاجرين والانصار الذين تبعوه في ساعه العسره من بعد ما قاد يزيغ قلوب فريق منهم ثم تاب عليهم انه بهم رؤوف رحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى has declared that he has turned with all his mercy and compassion to his messenger to all the muhajirin and all the ansar who followed him accompanied him in this in the difficult hour in the hardship hour of time of hardship this was jashul usra it is called hardship lack of rations length of the journey heat of the weather and you know enemy roman empire hardest test to which the companions of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were put but who followed so they deserve all the mercy of allah all compassion of allah so it's a declaration laqad la tab allah wa ala nabiyyi wal muhajirin wal ansar alladhina tabawu fi saat al usra min ba'd ma qada yazigu qulub fariqin minhum after that 
the hearts of some of them were wavering. They were about to swerve because they were human beings. You know, Quran is very natural. Although they were human beings, a time comes, you know, even the strongest in faith, you know, he has some feeling. But his faith now comes to his rescue and he is firm. So although hearts of some were near to swerve, summata abadehi, but because they, they remain firm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned towards them with his mercy and compassion. Innahu bihim raufur raheem. He is very gracious with them and merciful. Now those three whose case was adjourned or you know deferred. Whose case was held in suspense. Until when the whole earth Bimarahubat despite all its vastness became narrow on them. The Prophet declared a social boycott for them. Nobody should talk to them, these three. Not their wives even, not their friends even. Now what happened? You know, this society is a very beautiful hadith, must be learned. The ways of the Prophet ﷺ. What was the punishment? What was the feelings of these people? What was the attitude of the society as a whole? So that gives us a very good representation of, you know, that social fabric that was there at Medina at that time. But I can't go into detail. Even their own souls became shrunk upon them. It appeared as if, you know, life has become absolutely harsh. And death appears to be better than this life. Nobody is ready to talk to us. Even the closest friends. For example, Hazrat Kaab ibn Malik asked one of his friends, Don't you know I am a sincere mu'min? He replied, Allahu wa Rasuluhu alam, and just turned his face. Allah and his messenger know better. And he says, when I went to the mosque of the Prophet I said, Salaam, he didn't reply, turned his face. Then I started praying, and during the, my prayer, I used to see, you know, that the Prophet is seeing towards me. But when I looked towards him, he turned his face away. <laughs> so this was the psychological, you know, that he was not harsh, he was kind. But actually it was all for training, for purification. And they very well knew that there is no refuge from Allah except to go to Him. So Mataba alayhim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their tawbah and turned towards them with mercy and forgiveness. So that yes, they should also make full tawbah. In Allah wa tawabu rahim, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tawab and rahim. Ya ayu aladina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and keep the company of the truthful people. This is again, you know, a hint. If you remain an individual, you know, Satan will have all the ease to attack you. If you keep a good company of the truthful people, this is the blessing of a social life. You know, you must get strength from people who are themselves strong in character. It was not befitting for the believers, for those who are living in Medina, and also those who are who live around you know, from the desert Arabs, and yet Rasulullah, that they should stay behind Allah's messenger. Nor should they have preferred their lives to his life. They were not going, and they were saying that the Prophet is going. What does it mean? They were preferring their lives to his life. 
ولا يرغبوا بانفسهم ان نفس ذلك بانهم لا يصيبهم غم ولا نسب ولا مخبصه في سبيل الله this is because they reflects them neither thirst nor toil nor hunger in the way of allah wala yatawuna mawtiyan yaghizu bihi ye yaghizu alkuffara wala yanaluna min aduwin nadan illa kutiba lahum bihi amalun salih nor neither they tread in the, in the way of allah which enrages the disbelievers nor gain they again from the enemy but a righteous deed is thereby written down for them surely inna allah la yuzi ajr al mursalin that is whatever they are doing it will be accounted it will go to their credit if they are you know going in the walking in the way of allah every step is being recorded in the la la yuzi ajr al mursalin that is allah is not going to to destroy or you know that the the reward of these mursalin go in vain wala yunfiquna nafaqatan sagiratan wala kabiratan nor do they spend anything whether small or big wala yaqtaruna wadiyan nor do they cross a valley illa kutiba lahum but this being recorded all their good deeds are recorded liyajziyahum allah ahsana ma kanu ya'malu so that allah will reward them best and more better than they were doing wama kana al mu'minuna la yanfuru ka fa this ayah is very important and mostly it has been misinterpreted ma kana al mu'minuna la yanfuru ka fa it was not possible or it is not possible for the believers that all of them should go out falawla nafara min kulli firqati minhum ta'ifatun why doesn't a group from every party of theirs goes out they get the fact of the deen so that they they get the understanding knowledge and deep understanding and deep, deep insight in the deen wala yanzuru qaumahum iza raja'u ilayhim and so that they should warn their people their their tribes or their nations when they return back to them la allahum yahzurun so that they should also save themselves this has been misinterpreted about fighting that all muslims can go cannot go out for fighting and you know so only a, a group should go and because the prophet will be there so with his company he will he will gain some they will gain some in, uh, knowledge of uh, the deen of allah and when they come back they will impart that knowledge to other people also who stayed back this is wrong actually this is the solution to that problem which are i pointed out at that time al arabu ashadd kufran wa nifaq these desert people desert arabs they are hard more hard in kufr as well as the fact why because they are deprived from the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam only seldom they get a chance to see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to come over to madina to spend some time with him now what what is the solution all of these people cannot be called to madina they come here they have to stay back so from every group from every hukum corner some people should come stay here they should educate themselves they should benefit from the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they should get the deepest understanding and they should get the insight into the deen the philosophy and the wisdom of deen and then when they go back to their homes and their their regions to their tribes they should impart that knowledge to them so this is actually and abu hayyan he has given this interpretation and i was glad that when i consulted today the interpretations you know of uh marwan shabir al usmani he did mention this although mostly you know people think that this was for for fighting no at the event of tabuk it was necessary for every muslim to go so it is against the context if they think that it is it regards the fighting or going to war in the cause of allah because this is agreed upon that at this time at the expedition of tabuk it was obligatory for every muslim to go out ya ayyuhallazina amanu qatilu allazina yalunakum min alkuffar wa yajidu fikum ghilza oh you who believe now this is the final verdict of quran no question of any coexistence between kufr and iman qatilu allazina yalunakum min alkuffar go to war against those of kuffar who are 
close to you. This revolution had now to be, you know, exported. I told you, the two-pronged mission of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As far as the Arabian Peninsula is concerned, the mission has been accomplished. But now it has to proceed. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not sent for the Arabian Peninsula or the Arab nation only. He was the mercy unto whole worlds, and he was sent for all humanity. So now go and fight. And that is why, immediately after, you know, his death, people started going out, armies going out. We can say that from the, uh, from the Roman side, the beginning was because, you know, the king of Ghassan martyred the emissary and the ambassador of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this was a retaliation. But what about Iran? Why did they invade? They invaded. it. Why? Because now it was their duty to make the deen of Allah supreme. That is why when Rustam asked, you know, Saad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala, why have you invaded us? You used to come, you, you, you Arabs, you know, you used to come and raid just as a tribal raid and went back. This time you are not going back. What has happened? Then the reply of Saad ibn Abi Waqqas was, Inna qad ursilna li nukhrij al-nas min zulumat al-jahalat ila nur al-iman wa min jawr al-muluk ila adl al-islam. Now we are on a mission. We have been sent. Allah sent Muhammad. Muhammad sent us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to take people out of the ignorance, darknesses of ignorance into the light of iman and to relieve and free the people from the bondages of these kings and, you know, emperors to the other of Islam, to the social, just social order of Islam. This is our mission. Ya ayuhalladzina amanu, qatilulladzina yalunakum minal kufare, wali yadufikum gilzah. They should feel and find within you, in you, the harshness, no love. Gilzah, the same words with which we started today. Ya ayyuhu nabiyyu jahid al-kufara wal-munafiqoon wal-munafiqina wal-yajidu fikum ghilza The same word is here. Wa'alamu anna Allah ma'al muttaqeen As I told you, no coercion, no compulsion in religion to individuals. Nobody will be forced to accept Islam. But the system, deen, it should be to Allah. Unless you are helpless. That's something else. But if you can, you have to strike at the system. You can't accept the system. There's no question of any coexistence between the right and the wrong. And rest assured that Allah is with those who have taqwa. He will be on your back. He will help you. Now again a reference to the munafiqeen. Whenever is a surah is revealed, there are some among these munafiqeen, when Yakulo, who, who say to each other, who, who say to, to the Muslim, Ayyukum zadat ho hadahi imana? Which of, which of you has this surah increased in iman? Has this surah, which has been revealed just now, increased you in iman? Increased the depth of iman, the depth of conviction in you? Fabma lazin amanu fazadat hum iman. Those who have the real belief and real faith, actually, it adds to their iman. And they are rejoice. They rejoice at, the, at that new revelation which comes. And as for those in whose hearts there is a disease, the disease of the faq. Now every new revelation adds to the impurities to which they were already there. The impurities adds impurity to the impurities which were pre-existing there. وَمَاتُ وَهُمْ kafirun, And they will die in this condition of real kufr, although legal Islam. This is the same subject that we have read in Surah Al-Baqarah. يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَسِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَسِيرًا With this very Quran, Allah guides so many and Allah misguides so many. The same surah of Quran adding to iman of the mu'mineen and adding to nifaq of the munafiqeen. Don't they see 
that they are tried and they are put to a test. Every year, once or twice, there is always an occasion, go out for the cause of Allah, go out for the cause of Allah, it becomes a test for them. Summa la yatubun. So they are warned. And they become conscious of their nifaq. But they are not making tawbah. They don't repent. Wahum la yazdak karun. And they are not admonished. Wa iza ma undilat suratun, nazar abadum ila abadin. And when a surah is sent down, a new revelation is sent down. Nazar abadum ila abadin. Now just imagine the, you know, sahaba sitting, the prophet recites, that this is the new revelation which has come to me. Jibreel just came and he has brought these ayat. Now, because in that ayah or in that surah there is some new command, so these munafiqeen suits say to each, see to each other, Nazar abadum ila abadin. Hal yaraakum in ahadin? Is somebody seeing you? So man sarafu, then they sleep away. You know, it's better to sleep away from here now because some new musibah is coming, you know. So they just take care that nobody is seeing them, they're watching them. Hal yaraakum in ahadin? Is somebody seeing you? So man sarafu, then they go away. Saraf Allahu qulubahu. Actually Allah has turned away their hearts. They are known called me la yaftahoon. Because they are a nation, they are a people who don't have the real understanding. Now the two last ayats which are very dear to us, should be very dear to us. Laqad jaakum rasoolum min anfusikum. O oh, mankind, a messenger has come to you. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum. It's very heavy upon him. It hurts him very much. Whatever is inflicting you, he's so much sympathetic towards you. If there is something which afflicts you, he is hurt. Harisun alaykum. He is greedily solicitous for all the good for you. He wants all the good should be given to you. He is very much haris for you. That all goods, all blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get from them. Now, alaykum bil mu'minina raufur raheem. And for the believers, he is very much merciful and most kind. Fa'in tawallahu. But if, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they turn away, فَقُلْ Exclaim, حَسْبِ Allah. Allah is sufficient for me. I need no support. Whosoever wants to support, he should support for himself, for his own gain, for his own salvation. If you are turning away, my God is with me. لا تحضر إن الله معنا which he said to Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه in the cave of Sar don't be grieved Allah is with us حسبي الله for me Allah is sufficient لا إله إلا هو there is no God except He عليه توكلت I have put all my trust all my faith in Him I depend wholly solely on Him وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ And He is the Lord of the Great Throne. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات مزدك الحكيم. الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations 
first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-i-o-n-a. Join us. Together we can make a difference.